Uh, I'm Andy Altman, as the spoke yesterday, the former planning director in Washington, D.C. Uh, and with me is my co-chair. <coughs> I'll introduce. Hello. Hello, I'm Ratnakar Gaikwad, Metropolitan Commissioner, MMRD. Great. We, as you can see on the agenda, we have a, a very uh, congested session that we're going to uh, plan to move through as, uh, to get as much uh, uh, done as possible. Um, because we have a very, very rich uh, set of presentations and experiences uh, that we're going to share about planning, uh, how cities are planned, uh, both here in Indian cities, not only in Mumbai, but much of the research that you'll hear from Philip Roda about the other Indian cities, participants here from a variety of cities, and international experiences. So we're going to try to stick pretty strictly to the time. Um, and I guess I get to uh, start out very briefly for a moment uh, to just make a, a, an opening comment um, about, uh, about the planning of cities, because uh, in a way I get to connect what the session yesterday, which was about the vision for cities and how they're actually planned, and then later we'll hear how they're actually governed and what gets implemented. So there's a very nice connection between these two that we can draw. But the connection I like to draw between vision and planning, which often are seen as completely distinct. We know planning is often seen as a more technocratic exercise, uh, regulatory exercise, but at its heart is simply fulfilling a vision. Um, this is based on significant amount of research you're gonna hear about that Philip Roda has done um, about planning and to begin to understand the planning challenge. And interestingly, as he went around, as you'll hear, 40%, 7% of people interviewed throughout the different exchanges we've had in India with government and other officials have said that planning is one of the most critical challenge as growth begins to overtake planning and outdated plans can't keep up with the pace, velocity, and uh, complexity of planning. These were just some of the very brief quotes that I think will help to frame this discussion. I'm not gonna read all of these, but I think the one that says it is growth which overtakes all of our planning, which really raises the question of what is the relevance of planning? How does one plan an environment of so much complexity and change? The second area is city shaping, which is from big planning to the idea of what is master planning. Um, and I think it's a very interesting quote that says, is master planning in fact a good way to plan for urban growth at all, given its dynamism? Uh, and this final one that says, is there something wrong with planning uh, if 90% of the people are outside of it? In other words, what again, how do we plan in this kind of environment? Um, and finally, the whole question of linkage, which is how do we move out of the silos that characterize much planning, housing, transport, land use? We're dealing with a city that is a completely intertwined organism. How do we link these? And we've just begun to see some quotes that people saying how we've just woken up to the enormity of the issue of land use and planning, and we heard that yesterday. So I think some of these quotes, which come from people here, uh, begin to set, I think, the stage for this debate about how planning uh, actually operates, how it can be made relevant, and to hear from international experiences uh, what we can learn. So with that, um, I'm going to turn over to my co-chair, who's going to make a brief statement, and then we're going to begin our presentations. Good morning. Hello. Good morning, everybody. I think we are in for a very exciting uh, session, how cities are planned. I may sound a bit cynical if I say, are cities really planned? Amartya Sen rightly said that I am not interested in knowing what is your GDP, what is your per capita income, what are your human development indices, what is the infant mortality rate, what is the school dropout rate, what is the level of nutrition, that is most important. In the Indian context, now take a city like Mumbai. 60% of the population in abject poverty, slum areas with unhygienic conditions. Are we planning for them? In our planning process, we do earmark certain plots for economically weaker sections, but then encroachments come on that because we do not provide housing for the poor. Now, uh, such inhuman conditions prevailing and uh, urban poverty issues are not being understood 
in, in, in proper form. What is the nature of urban poverty? What is the extent of urban poverty? What is the impact of lack of potable water <coughs> on poor? <coughs> Absence of health facilities. I think all these will go into planning for cities. Unfortunately, my little experience while working in Pune and Mumbai Corporation shows that there's a lack of willows. There's a mindset also. In Pune, I was surprised that lakhs of people near Pune railway station squatting on the road in, in Nalas, we found that sanitation was so much neglected that the ratio of population to one seat was in many pockets, one is to 800. So we used to say that if you stand in the queue at the toilet side, you may have to wait for 15 days for your turn to come. Now this is the state of affairs, not only in, in Maharashtra, but in most of the cities, not only in India, but in most of the underdeveloped uh, countries. So when we talk about uh, planning for the cities, I think this aspect of urban poor has to be taken into consideration, which unfortunately is not taken into consideration. Now, let us look at this side of urban infrastructure. There also precious little has happened. Our roads were not been able to widen. In Mumbai, east-west links were not been able to build with the result that from here to Dadar, which is just uh, about 10 kilometers, takes more than one hour to reach. Now, this is the scenario of traffic, transportation, then water supply, drainage we have neglected for, for years and years. And uh, we could uh, witness the, the calamity in July 2005. So I think we need to have a more holistic approach while planning for the cities and the implementation is very important where all stakeholders have to come together. Gone are those days where government was provider. Government has to only facilitate and all the stakeholders, including public-private partnership, all that has to come together very, very quickly. There's hardly any time, otherwise we'll be running out of time. So thank you very much for these initial remarks and let us look forward to exciting sessions. Thank you. Thank you.